What's going on everybody? So I don't know if you know that um, Dr. Umar Johnson made another appearance on The Breakfast Club and while most of what he says I agree with, there's some key things that I don't agree with and you know I made a post saying that I've never seen somebody be so right and so wrong all at the same time. I wanted to take the time to make a video to, to go through it not because I want to go back and forth or, or there's a beef. I think it's a good opportunity to display something that I'm constantly trying to push with with my content and my series. Um, so let's let's go through it real quick. Let's look at this. There's five major problems that affect black America. Five. What are they? Mass incarceration, mm -hmm. miseducation, gentrification, access to wealth and police genocide. They're all equally relevant. Mass incarceration, miseducation, gentrification, police genocide and access to wealth. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Umar says that there's five equally relevant things that are plaguing the black community currently. And I agree that there are multiple fronts that we need to fight on, but let's go through what he said. He said there's mass incarceration, there's miseducation, there's police genocide, gentrification, and access to wealth, okay? So, when I look at that, right, some of these things are related. Gentrification and access to wealth are related issues. That comes back to us having ownership. That comes back to us having like access to wealth. Wealth is not necessarily cash. That's assets. Assets are often land and or you know properties. If you own those properties, it's a lot harder to gentrify. See, a lot of the times with gentrification, we don't own those areas. We don't actually we live there, we reside there, but we don't own those places. So so that that's one of the issues. You know, miseducation, that, that comes back, that plays into everything. I don't think they're all equal. I think first we need to educate ourselves about who we are, what our value is, why we're in this position we are in. I think that's more important than anything else because I think with proper education we can then go into the ownership aspects. We can understand our relationship with police and the justice system better. Um, but yes, I, I, I do agree that we need to fight all these things on multiple fronts, which actually leads me into my, less, my, my next point of contention that um, that I have with what he said. My question for Senator Booker, as it would have been for Senator Harris, but of course she dropped out now, okay? What plan do you have? Not promise. Black America has to get out of this thing. We want promises. I don't want no damn promises. I want to see a plan of action. What plan do you have to deal with miseducation? What plan do you have to deal with mass incarceration? What plan do you have to deal with the ethnic cleansing of black people out of our own residential neighborhoods? What plan do you have to deal with police assassinations of defenseless unarmed black folks? And what plan do you have to help us access the wealth of America's banks? Mm. Dr. Umar continues to explain how these five things need to be addressed by a politician that he wants to vote for. And that no politician, he says black politician, but eventually he goes on to say no politician out there has a plan for these things. He said he doesn't want promises, he wants a plan. And I understand that ideology, yes. We don't want to be promised to or lied to or, or, or just given tokens of appreciation. You know, there needs to be a plan in place. But my, the, my main issue here is, and this is what my whole project and, and my whole philosophy is based on is, we cannot ask a government that oppressed us and put us in this position to then heal us and put us in a different position. That doesn't make sense to me. Why are you looking for politicians to, to make a plan for us? We should be crafting the plans. I, I often make the correlation between us and a lobbying group, right? If you look at any, any big you know, pharmaceutical company or the NRA, they have lobbyists, right? Those lobbyists don't wait for the the politicians to craft a bill or to use certain language they give them the language they tell them here's what we need you to do here's our plan activate this plan here's what if so i don't understand why we as black people the most disenfranchised group in this country since the native americans are asking our politicians to craft plans for us this is the same critique like when people say oh obama didn't do anything for black people what did we ask him to do as, as, as a unit, as a group, we, we need to come together as a group and craft our own plan. We need to have structured ideals and structured requests that can actually be put into action. Secondly, right, this is a two-part argument, a two-part issue I have. If you're going to tell people that you're only going to vote for someone that has a plan like that, 
then you're essentially telling people not to vote and not to participate in government, which is ridiculously harmful to black people. This is another front that we need to fight on. We need to have representation in government. We need to have our interests represented in government. We need to have people who are willing to fight for our interests involved in government. If you don't have that, then you're, you're never going to see any of these things. It's imperative to me that we understand that you have to vote. You have to vote for your interests. Now, is anyone going to have specialized interests for black people? No. We have to have specialized interests for ourselves and bring that to candidates. We have to bring that to parties. And then, once we do that, then we can say, you guys need to bring a candidate, you guys need to, to take care of these issues, or we're not going to vote for you. Or we're going to formulate our own party that will do that. Or we're going to hold, withhold our resources until you do that. that. That's what we have to do. We cannot wait for some, a politician to, to make a plan for us. Currently, actively, in 2020, you need to find a politician that aligns with what you believe is right and will not stand in the way of our progress. I don't vote for black people who are not married to black people. I, I think we know that. that. <laughs> right, right. Okay. You, you so she wasn't it. going to get my vote anyway. What if, if she had a, what if she had all the plans for black people that we talk about but was still married to a white person? She could not have because you can't mix oil and water. So if a black woman is committing her life to a white male, understanding what the white male population has done to black people in this country, that right there tells me how serious you are about us. And then lastly, you know, he talks about, you know, how if you have a white partner, you can't really be for the betterment of black people. I completely disagree with this. I, I think that, you know, love is love. Um, there's a lot of different ways now. The problem I do have is when people say they put down black people as if they are not equal to. If, uh, you know, if black men say that black women are less than other races or they're not as whatever as other races or they, when you start comparing by race, now I have an issue. If you say, oh, black men ain't this and black men ain't that or I need to get me, that's where there's an issue. But if you find someone who takes care of you and treats you with respect, and, and understands or is willing to try to understand what it's like being a, a black person or a person of color, then that is a beautiful relationship and that has no bearing on where you stand politically. Um, you know, if you were to, to date an immigrant, whether they be black or not, they're going to have different issues than you as an American. Does that mean that you, you should not date that? You should only date someone who understands you fully as you are now currently? I disagree with that completely, and I don't think that has any bearing on political betterment for an entire people. I mean, I know where, I know where that, that idea comes from, and I understand the, the racial purity aspect of it, but I don't agree with it, and I don't think it has any place in this conversation when you're talking about what is needed for black people to, to uplift themselves. Because that's really what it's about to me, is we need to stop asking the government to help us out. This is the same country that put us in this position, the same country that had us enslaved, that did reconstruction and had lynch mobs at our door, the same country that had, currently has redlining, and the Republicans are currently pushing to make sure that black people have a harder time voting, like we didn't have the civil rights marches in the 60s. This is America. So we have to do better for ourselves. We cannot ask this government to create a plan for us because the plan that they created is currently in action and that's what leads to these problems. Vote.